So, Mexico. I ended the last video north of Joshua Tree National Park. The next day, I drove through the park, and I actually thought it was even more interesting than Yosemite. I did some of the walking trails, looked at Skull Rock, and did one of the off-road loops. And after that, I drove up to South Gate and kept going. Just south of the park, I found a trail called Red Rock Canyon. This time I drove into the night by choice, and after a while, I found a spot that was sheltered from the wind and called it a night. In the morning, I drove out following this big, dried out washout, and after getting to the main road, I stopped at the infamous Salton Sea. Still very beautiful, though now toxic. I went and found a spot in the dunes. As you can tell, it was very windy. And the next morning, I decided to take off when I saw there was a sandstorm coming my way. So the big day had finally come. It was time to get new tires on the truck. I ran these KO2s down until they were pretty much bald. Look at the difference between the old and the new tires. I almost ended up buying a second set of KO2s because I do love them that much, but I went with the mud terrains for a bit more security. They're both 10 ply with three ply sidewalls. Big thing about the Toyos is they're non-directional. So this truck has a bit of a lean to the right and the tires on the right side wear a little bit faster. This way I can swap the tires from the right side onto the left side, no problem. That morning I was supposed to go to Mexico, but I started getting a squeaking noise coming from the front right. I'd spent the last few days in the sand, so I figured it was more than likely just sand stuck in between the brake pads and the rotor. But just to be safe, I did decide to jack up the truck that night and take a look. And the wheel did have some play, indicating that the bearings were failing. Squeaking actually was just coming from some sand stuck in the brake pads, but I didn't want to go into Mexico with a potentially failing bearing. And I also didn't want to use my spare bearing set unless I had to. So that morning, Instead of going to the border, I went to Napa, and luckily they had an inner, an outer, and a seal. So after pulling the hub apart in the parking lot, I could tell some water had gotten in, and eventually I found the inner bearing race pretty gouged out. It took me a few hours to put everything back together, and then I stopped at Walmart and got this $25 dash cam, which says it's 1080p HD, but you can be the judge of that. And then I also put a chain around everything on the back. It's not really a strong chain, but nothing in the back is really that valuable. This just keeps people from grabbing the shovel or axe or propane tank off the back. And boom, just like that, I was in Mexico and there were people juggling at the stoplights. I did have to go into secondary inspection, but that only took five minutes and everything was good. I quickly drove down to San Felipe and found a spot to camp on the beach before it got dark. This spot was kind of near some residential areas, but it would do for the first night, and we were finally on the beach next to the ocean. So that morning, I drove down the beach to those hills you can see in the far distance. That would be our next campsite for a few days.
I had finally found what I was looking for. Some white sandy beaches, warm weather, and good amount of privacy. After a while, this dirt biker came down the beach and we chatted for a bit. He had moved down to the Baja from the States and long story short, I told him I was out of things to do. I had finished all my books and movies and he told me about a book exchange he's got back at his place. So I went back with him and I got a new book. Absolute lifesaver. After going back to the beach and spending one more night there, I decided I wanted to cross the Pacific side of Baja, so I backtracked from San Felipe Bay up to Ensenada. I honestly wasn't really a big fan of Ensenada, and after restocking on a few essentials, I drove south a few hours went through a small town and started working my way towards the coast and I found a great little spot for the first night. One thing about that spot was it rode out, was a bit off camber, but it ended up being no problem at all for the truck, and we made it out and started heading down towards San Quentin. While looking for some camping spots, I came across these cliffs that were marked as a good spot on High Overlander, which is a great app by the way, and you should use it if you're going to do a trip like this. I decided not to stay here, but I did watch the birds fishing, and there were dolphins in the distance, and just a nice spot to have lunch. I got down to this area called Cabo San Quentin, and this whole area was a beautiful nature reserve full of old volcanoes. And you drive out onto the beach and then take these sand tracks to this gate, which is a registration area. You tell them how many nights you're going to stay. It's all free, volunteer based, and they work off donations. And after that, you drive up 10 kilometers down pure sandy beach on this beautiful peninsula. The final obstacle is this sandy hill climb you gotta do, and then you have access to a network of trails on the point of the peninsula.
after driving around for a bit, I found a nice little spot that I liked on the southwest corner of the peninsula, and I settled in for a few days. This was one of the most beautiful spots I had camped so far this whole trip. And during low tide, you could harvest mussels and crabs, which made for good eating. After a few days, it was time to head out, but the bolts holding in the light bar had actually rattled loose from all the off-roading. And I have a bag of spare nuts and bolts, but none of them were small enough to fit in the hole. So I just drilled out the holes and replaced the bolts and then I was on my way. I decided to head into the desert a bit to get away from the sound of the crashing waves and the wind to try and get a bit of this video done, but that ended up being pointless because the wind was just as strong in the desert. So I turned around and headed to this little motel called Mama Espinosa's, which is a famous stop during the Baja 1000 and a famous stop with off-roaders. It was nice to get a hot shower. The Wi-Fi kept going out every 30 seconds, so I didn't get any work done. And next day, I drove down further to the Scorch Cactus Fields. I eventually ended up in this spot right beside Bahia de Los Angeles on the Sea of Cortez, seven islands behind. And there's all these old volcanoes, the water's crystal clear and very deep. There were dolphins almost every day and the fishing was amazing. So I spent five days here. So for the first while, I snagged up a bunch and lost a decent amount of good metal lures because the first 10 to 20 feet is pretty shallow and then it drops off. Then I realized the soft plastics were working much better, but they kept getting bit in half by all these toothy fish. And then I finally realized that if I went out right before sunset, there was pretty much a feeding frenzy going on right in front of me. And I could catch these fish on almost a bear hook. I mean, I could pretty much use anything and they would bite.
these leopard groupers and triggerfish are delicious. In the middle of the desert, there's like <clears throat> nothing for a hundred kilometers each way. And there are these uh, three trucks coming by. So I moved up, moved off the road, to let them by. And uh, I've got a log stuck in my drive shaft. So I think I'm gonna have to get underneath. I have a saw, cut it in half. So we'll see if that works. Bad day to be wearing a white shirt, but uh, I got it. I broke my saw. <sighs> so this was all on a 200 kilometer track between Bahia de Los Angeles and almost Guerrero Negro. It's a pretty famous track that's used during the point to point Baja races. And I wasn't alone out there. I ran into a few guys on adventure bikes who were struggling in the deep sand. And there was also a group called Off the Grid, which is like this huge dune buggy convoy. It's maybe 30 vehicles. And I passed them a few times, they passed me, and then I saw them at the end. But overall, it took me almost six hours to do 200 kilometers. So by the time I was done, it was pretty much dark and I found a little side trail and I pulled off into this flat little spot, which was fine for a night, but the ground was covered in these little cactus balls and these guys hurt. Where I grew up, we have burrs and they're these little prickly balls that you kind of throw at each other when you're kids and they stick to your clothes. These are like that, only they stuck into my tires. The thorns on these are really hard and really painful. So after a few hours of driving, I ended up in the town of Mulahe to pick up a few things and restock. And I kind of got lost in this town because the main bridge to leave the town got washed out and my maps wouldn't update. Eventually I found my way out and I was driving down the coastal road up the Bay of Conception, which is a very popular destination in Baja for snorkeling and boating. It is gorgeous here, but it has been insanely windy the last few days. So eventually I found this little trail that goes to the other side of the bay, thanks to I Overlander again. And within a few minutes, I came to this big washout. It looked crossable, so I went over it. You can see I almost tried to go to the left side of the truck again. Even after owning a right-hand drive vehicle for almost three years, sometimes you still forget. And all of that has finally led me here. I am on the east side of the Bahia Concepcion on the southern half of Baja, California. And next time I talk to you, I'll either be at the southern tip or on the mainland of Mexico. Till next time.